Hello, dear students. Uh, welcome to the class of e-commerce. Uh, today we will talk about um, marketing automation and um, our main focus will be on uh, two topics. One of them will be a little bit about, there's going to be a little bit of introduction uh, about chatbots, how they work and um, how you can implement them. Uh, there's one example of a chatbot um, on our on one of the uh, pages that I created um, a while ago. I'm not 100%, still 100% sure that it works, uh, but you're welcome to test it out. Uh, you can go to facebook.com slash um, and you can try uh, chatting uh, with uh, sending basically anything uh, to, to that uh, page, um, messaging it, and it should, it should reply you. So it's a very simple, example bot how it works and 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 um and sort of to show show it uh, sh show that it's not really a complicated thing um to implement so in general 2016 there were about 34000 chatbots in 2017 about 100000 bots and in 19 um there were already over 1 million so the number is growing rapidly and um, and exponentially so bots are just a part of um, our our everyday life and um, this is going to be a very f a first and a very brief um, introduction um, of marketing automation um, brief intro on, on on bots second part we will uh, focus on um, when I will introduce the way automation can be implemented in Google search ads and uh, Facebook ads. And uh, roughly, it's something that everybody should know. Uh, I will show a couple of examples. I will pause the screen, uh, stop recording, and uh, re-enable it when we'll have the account so that we can, you know, so that I can show you the way the automation things work uh, in, in, um, in Google Ads and Facebook. Third thing, if we have time, I will provide you some examples of uh, Zaps. Um, Zap, Z Zapier is uh, one of the let's say probably widely used um, marketing automation um, solution there are several of them one of them is called zapier um, another one is called if this then that and there's also integromat the one which usually we use uh, in our projects um, day to day the reason why i will be showing you uh, cases built uh, on zapier simply because um, it's easiest and it's probably the most welcome to onboard uh, the first uh, the first uh, automation uh, practitioners so these are the first um, elements and if we manage uh, i think i think we will i'm pretty sure that that's going to be that's going to be enough for us so um, chatbots then Google search, Facebook ads, automations, and then zaps. This, this is our uh, schedule for today. So um, what exactly are chatbots? Um, roughly, it's something that you can interact with when you send a message to a Facebook page. And um, when you also go sometimes to a site which has a messenger uh, plugin implemented, and um, through that messenger plugin you can chat with the you know site and um, sometimes uh, real people will answer you sometimes there will be um, automated scenarios i our agency we had couple of um, couple of projects where we implemented the automation like facebook uh, chat automation solutions this is not really something that's very useful in practice it looks nicer on paper than in real life because when people 
approach your page and send you a message. Uh, in many cases, it's, uh, you know, of course, let's say if you're a real estate company and, uh, you know, there's there's a request um, about um, so, so sort of, uh, so, so, hello, how are you doing? Uh, you know, we would like to buy a house. Can you please tell us, you know, what, uh, what exactly is the price, you know, of the house that you're selling? So, you know, you can have the pre-automated answer, you know, to that, um, but in many cases, um, the questions are very specific and uh, sort of creating the uh, automation sequences uh, for every possible messenger interaction is a little bit waste of time, both yours, mine and pro probably your copywriters. Um, from what we've seen, despite the fact that there's a possibility, you know, for people to chat on Facebook with the eShop. And even if we, you know, we implement the dynamic feed um, integration with the Facebook chat, still people prefer purchasing not on, you know, Messenger or Facebook chat, but rather on simple eShop. Maybe that's a little bit different in states where you can actually, you know, finalize the purchase on uh, Facebook itself. In Europe, you cannot do that. You have to leave the site anyway. So if you're still gonna leave the site, maybe for me as a company, it's better to direct you, you know, quicker, you know, out of Facebook to website where I can actually um, track your activities and uh, then also use you know things like push notifications and stuff like that. So a couple of um, simple examples of chatbots. Um, one of them is just like I said, you know you go to Nordstrom and um, you choose to browse their catalog. And of course, there's there's a way for you to you know be very active, and uh, simply click on uh, you know on a product. Um, you can buy this item. You can see more like this. You can ask a question. And uh, when I asked, for example, so what exactly you know when I wanted um, to browse uh, Nordstrom products, uh, first of all, they asked me. What is my price range? So I said that my price range is from 275 to 250, and you know, suddenly some suggestions you know come. So it's it's very interactive, it's very nice. The problem is that the volume is still not there. So eventually, maybe, uh, but it's not still 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 it's not a today thing. Um, then of course you can you know ask people for or ch ask chatbots. Uh, for more products like hi David um, you know thanks for shopping you know, with us and uh, look this is this is something that you might be interested in and there's a there's a product you know sort of push uh, you know for for a user you know to interact with then of course you can uh, sort of track the way everything is moving from one location to another and uh, it's very helpful, very useful for people. Uh, instead of um, simply having everything on email, you can also have on Messenger, which is sort of, which is a nice thing, but I also would, let's say, like to have the same information on email as well. So it's better to ask people what they prefer, but a uh, majority of the customers will choose to have things the way they are instead of something that's you know groundbreaking different and um, then of course um, some some assistance like you know um, somebody's look is looking for tips and uh, and there are some suggestions like somebody saying that love this shirt uh, can I also buy this in black so when somebody asks if they um, also can buy it in black, 
there's an algorithm on the back end, sort of artificial intelligence, uh, kind of like, you know, very low level artificial intelligence, which in which reads keywords. And in this case, the keyword is um, buy black. And then uh, uh, the the uh, answers provided, of course, your total will be that and that. Uh, do you want to place the order? And if you say yes, then, you know, the order will be placed. Um, you can also interact with content which you prefer, which is great because um, why else, you know, would you need um, a chatbot if, you know, you cannot really interact with it, if it's not interactive, if it's, it's irrelevant and, 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 and boring. So, you know, interaction makes, makes it better. CNN provides really nice interactive content. Um, I personally used a couple of chatbots, uh, you know, for weather. And honestly, uh, in the beginning, everything was amazing. But in about two months, um, I was a little bit just, you know, fed up with the, all the, you know, push, pushes and, 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 and uh, messages popping uh, every single day, every morning at 7 a.m., um, you know, I'm really happy to know that it's, you know, 16 degrees outside. Uh, but usually in winter, I know that it's cold anyway. So even it doesn't really matter if, uh, you know, it's minus 20 or minus 17. I don't care. It's, it's helpful, but not in everyday life. And uh, especially from the particular standpoint that that chatbot, you know, it was sort of, you know, um, built to assist people with jogging. It was pushing me, you know, to jog, um, even though I wanted, you know, to cuddle and I don't know, I, I wanted just to sleep in because it was super, super, super cold. And uh, concept for bot talking. Um, so the idea with the concept with the bots is that um, the elements are pretty similar. There's an option which you choose and elements. So in this particular case, um, you see that this is an image, which is an element and then are additional elements, which like, like in this particular case, you choose an option, what you want to do. Option one, two, three, view item, you know, bookmark item, or maybe, maybe, maybe um, buy something. And, uh, and that's it. So this is sort of the key concept of, uh, for bot talking. Um, something a little bit more interesting. Uh, in this case, I would like to present you the levels of bot complexity stages. And this is how everything sort of um, evolved. So this is the level one bot, uh, which just remembers things. It's a really great personalized storytelling case, something that's good probably for marketing campaign um, because uh, this is the case of uh, uh, Yeshi. Yeshi was um, an imagine, imaginable girl who's, who was created um, to represent a bot, a girl living in Ethiopia. And uh, she's like you know level one bot she remembers what what does it mean it means that you say things you write down the things that she should know and when somebody asks the questions she will tell the answers like you know it's like teaching a kid that two plus two is four but not explaining how and why the calculation is done so when you say when when, when you will write down that two plus two and you know type it in it will know that it's four but if you type you know what is two and two or what is uh two plus two minus one it will not know anything else because this is not what you taught because that bot just remembers things that you taught and nothing else so what kind of project happened with yeshi Yeshi was representing um, the idea behind Yeshi was that it was supposed to explain how people in Africa live and um, how many issues are with water in uh, in Africa. 
And um, it was a personalized storytelling. Uh, you could go find the Yeshi chatbots and start talking to her. You would ask her, hi, hi Yeshi, how are you doing? And she would say, I'm awesome. You know, I'm, I, I, everything, is, everything is nice. And you would ask her, so what do you do now? And she would say that she's on the route, uh, you know, for water or that she's on the route, um, you know, back home or that she's playing in the yard or, or something else. Like, you know, sort of pretending to be a girl um, living in Africa. And the key, and also like sometimes she would also mention something about facts, random facts from Africa, something like, you know, that there are 600 million people living there or that on average, um, these people commute about 125 million kilometers um, per day just to access water. That's... That's a sad story. Um, it would be really great if they had water closer to their home, to their homes. But you know, this, so this is this mainly is the, the the purpose of this bot. Just sort of you know, educate educate the world that in Africa there are many people that you know they commit a lot you know to consume water, and uh, and 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 that. Uh, this and and there was this nice personalized storytelling. Uh, people were really hyping, uh, really hyped about that bot uh, for a couple of couple of months. Uh, the peak usage was, um, you know, maybe uh, after after two three weeks. But then everybody forgot, and I think uh, me presenting that bot in this ISM e-commerce class is probably one of the few cases when um, these bots are still remembered. That's it. That's the sad part about this remembering bot. So um, another case of uh, this uh, sort of level one bot is uh, the the one which. Uh, could help with tips from random people. Uh, so this is a fun and simple, you know, tip which is su su was supposed to be the bot to promote the Swelly app, and um, in the end they just realized that they, uh, you know, consume not consume but they attract more people uh, just if they interact with that bot right here and right right there um, instead of simply showing uh, and, and, and forcing people to download the app. So the whole business model of the Swelly company um, or the company behind the Swelly app, uh, let's change a little bit. Um, the idea became making A-B tests in seconds. So you can upload two images um, like, you know, or two, two, two pictures, ask a question like, you know, what is better, Italy or France? Or, you know, what is what fits me better, the black jacket or the blue jacket or the brown shoes, anything that you want. Uh, is it steak or sushi like? And, you know, these questions would appear on rand for random people and uh, they would answer you. And this is the A-B test. That's it. So nothing really amazing. It's just, but but you know that's that's a really nice um, helpful insight because you know people um, you know you can take two pictures like you know brown brown let's say bike and um, I don't know purple bike and ask random people on the streets uh, which one should should you buy. Question is, would I buy? You know the bike based on the opinion of random people that i never knew and I don't really know um, i don't know i mean not really i think but that's that's the example uh the third example is something that i um, told already before is the poncho bot the one which with, with the fun weather forecast so um, you know you can um you can sort of type in that you want hourly forecast or uh, like you know monthly forecast and it just you know starts sending information with um, what exactly is the forecast for this week once again that's nice nice to have it 
but I have the forecast on my screen. I um, open the screen and you know that now it's, you know, 13 degrees. So it's, it's a nice thing if you want to live in Facebook Messenger. For me, at this point, I think that I would rather, you know, just have it on my screen and that's it. So still, anyway, that's, that's, a, nice, that's a nice approach. Um, there's also this level two bot, which is, uh, which has been implemented and that's a very, very interesting, um, um, app it's called Mondly. And so what does Mondly do? Mondly is a language bot. So the fun thing behind Mondly is not that it's a bot, but that it's actually a useful bot. Um, the way it works is that people choose to learn languages. For example, in this particular case, um, I want to learn German, right? So, you know, what is tea? What is coffee? Um, please swipe left down, you know, to, to learn some new works, new words, like I drink coffee, ich trinke Kaffee, you know, and then of course, uh, I can check if that's correct. Um, Mondly tells me that, you know, I'm doing good, that this is a correct answer. The great thing is, the actual great thing is not that it just, you know, helps you, you know, click buttons and be interactive, but it also sees if some tasks were too easy or too hard or too complicated uh, to other people, you know, to, to pass. If too many people fail the task, maybe it's not supposed to be on the beginner level. Maybe it's supposed to be on the intermediate level. Uh, like, you know, not level one, but level two, maybe level three. If too many people pass the task, like, you know, if 99% of the people pass it, maybe not, it's not worthy being advanced. Maybe it's intermediate. So, you know, you can increase, you can change the syllabus based on the results that uh, you see in the end and, and the app and sorry, not the app, but the bot learns itself. So it was created in a way that it's not just, you know, this um, check, checks, checks and uh, ticks and everything, but it's. It works in a way that people can actually um, interact with it. And after in the interactions, uh, it also, sorry, there's some weird noise in the background, which a little bit disturbs me, but uh, that's, that's okay, never mind. So uh, the, the awesome thing with Mondly is that it, creates it and, and works it in that. Sorry, let's do like this. I, I will pause it a little bit and uh, I will get back in a second. Uh, I will just ask people, uh, the cleaning lady to, 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 um, so back um, and um, once again, the, the, the amazing thing uh, with the Mondly language bot is that it actually learns and uh, that it changes the way it, it changes its you know difficulty and, and tasks uh, uh, based on based on uh, uh, the answers that people provided. Let's go further. What can happen after this? Uh, the level three bot is a Google Assistant, so or Siri, let's say. It's the it's the bot which understands you. It it doesn't just you know know math like you know what is two plus two. You know you can ask, hey Siri, what is two plus two? Or okay Google, what is two plus two? But it's just a very it's a very mega basic thing. It, it will provide you the answer to that, but you can also you know ask. Um, like, let's say, when is the birthday of, um, I don't know, your, your, your kids? And if they know, you know, who your kids are, they will tell you. 
um, if uh, you can ask um, you can ask to call a friend and it will do that so you can ask to make a purchase and it will do that you can you can uh, do many really amazing things with the level 3 bots which get more and more advanced with every single year and every single day so this is something that I like and, and, and that I um, admire in, uh, in, in my case. So um, the, the future is also amazing because we will have level four bots, the ones which will be indistinguishable from humans, like the ones which, let's say, would motivate your child to do homework. How would that work? So let's imagine that somebody, some weird bot, friends your kid um on facebook and starts you know talking about their life their days and uh you know as it might be just a random person or maybe a person from the class uh, maybe your child doesn't really know who they are um so they just talk to them and uh, you might be willing to push a certain agenda through these bots because maybe you want your child to be i don't know a sports star or maybe, maybe really good at uh, at at, at uh, maybe really good at tennis, or maybe really good at math. So you can you can push that, and uh, you can you can have really really nice um, examples and uh, really really nice a uh, uh, little bit little bit probably weird uh, or or uh, let's say maybe even yeah that i think i think i think creepy is the uh, nice uh, sort of expression of uh, that level of uh, level understanding of bot level level understanding but you know what if i can buy a bot for 5 euros which will make or help convince my kid you know to to do tennis i would pay five euros you know for that because that's that that's useful for me maybe if if i think that i want my kid to be um, a tennis player so level four, four bot is the one which really isn't indistinguishable from human um so this is this is something that uh, if you've seen the recent interview with mark zuckerberg uh, where he was uh, explaining how he sees the future um, future of um, mixed reality and uh, future of sort of not really augmented over so yeah it's not like you know augmented reality like augmented in a way that you have to put on the phone and and see things through the phone but sort of um, the the augmented in the actual way where you know, you have, a, have sort of a screen or glasses um, or something like that on your eyes. And um, it just allows you, uh, let's say, play um, card games with your friends. Uh, and these cards, like, you know, the card, the card game is an app. So you roughly, you know, all of you um, see other people around, around yourself and all of you are playing that, that 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 card game which is an app and uh, um, the same the same thing could work in a way that you know you have uh, uh, bots monitoring your um, tennis game play and uh, they would tell you that look you know you should strike harder or maybe you know you need a little bit little bit assistance on your left or in your or your right uh, or maybe your opponent uh, you know, is now on on, on, on left side of, of tennis court. So, you know, strike to right side. So that kind of, you know, assistance uh, can be really helpful uh, for, uh, you know, for, for you as, as professionals or, 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 or gamers or something like that. So you can even have probably like, you know, this virtual, so just that's, that's roughly the same virtual assistant but the one which is in which can be indistinguishable from actual human being and then um the amazing thing is that 
you know, would go back home and uh, it would ask you, so, hey, Aurimas, or, you know, uh, Dennis, uh, Jurga, Lina, etc. Um, how was your day? And um, they would really care or at least pretend or look like they care how your day was. That's, that's a nice feeling, right? When somebody cares um, about how things are happening. So, how do we start? Um, there are multiple platforms. Um, now we will focus on Messenger. As I said, uh, there are there are uh, four stages that we'll you know focus on today. One of them is uh, Facebook chatbots. So Messenger is you know a, an alternative. This is this is just basically the, kind of that first part. Second part will be about uh, Google Ads automations and uh, Facebook ad automations if we have time, and and then of course if we also have time, we will uh proceed uh with uh, the zaps so we start with chat fuel this is something that i like myself i use it and uh, this is mega easy so you can use chat fuel um you can also use um couple one of the uh, really really easy ones as well is many chat so can try that one as well so with chat fuel all you have to do is create the welcome message. And uh, so it's like, hi, um, this is your default welcome. So when somebody sends you a message, uh, this is the, what they're gonna see. This is your welcome message um, and um, write something. Then after 20 minutes, there's gonna be a first follow-up. After one day, the, you might be, there might be a nurturing message like, um, did, didn't you forget about us? Then they later, uh, maybe you are still interested in those shoes. I don't know, maybe, maybe not shoes, but something something like, you know, how are your shoes? Um, how, how things are going? And then suddenly in two days, look, only today, only now, we have 60% off for you for these shoes only. Uh, if you buy them now in the next two hours. Killer offer. Um, that's really worth considering. So how does it work? We go to the base particular, in, in this particular case, I went to uh, Facebook uh, to, 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 to Chatful. I connected, uh, created a very simple bot, connected it uh, to the page. And uh, when it's connected, it's like, you know, this get started. Hi, our master. This is this is. I, I didn't change anything. This is your default welcome message for your bot, which is created on Chatful and blah blah blah. Um, you can also create communication sequences, like, um, for example, thank you for reaching out. Come back later, and uh, there might be some links, like you know, link to Adweek, Search Engine Land, uh, visits uh, John Loomer, which is one of my favorite. Uh, Facebook bloggers, uh, Search Engine Land is also one of my favorite, uh, favorite sorry, uh, one of my favorite um, SEO blogs, and um, Adweek is my probably one of my Facebook, my, my God, one of my favorite um, blogs about uh, marketing in general. So this is this is it about the blogs. Uh, not blocks. This is it about the chatbots. So let's do like this. Uh, let me pause now for a second, and I will I will come back in a second uh, when I will have my Google Ads um, account uh, on. So welcome back. Uh, at this point, uh, we will focus on. Uh, on Google Ads automations. So, what exactly? Uh, what exactly are Google Ads? Google Ads automations. When you go into Google Ads account, you might see various campaigns. Like in this particular case, we have um, a campaign which is called APG Media. Uh, very good. Let's go to that particular campaign. Uh, there are there's an ad group. Go into ad group. There are keywords and um, of, of course, of course, as well, some 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 search uh, queries, and at that point, let's 
not really focus um, on the ads and uh, campaign structure itself. Uh, what I care about are the audiences because I want to show you how the uh, how the automations can work. So there are several ways uh, these automation elements can be implemented. One of them is through the bid adjustments. So bid adjustments is something really, really amazing. Um, when we have some audiences which work, which perform well, we can think that these audiences, you know, require, we want to spend more on them. If some audiences are poor, we want to spend less on these audiences. So how do you know if they perform well or, 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 or poorly? That simply is from our, you know, our, our statistics. So let us, first of all, do a couple of things. One of them is because these all these audiences are observation audiences. Let me show you how to add audiences to Google Ads search um, search campaigns. And this is something that's really, really important. Uh, with Google Ads search campaigns, many people have no idea that you can use also audiences to target or to adjust bidding on search campaigns. This is how it works. If you are, let's say you are buying, you're selling shoes and you're buying a keyword, new shoes online. Um, when somebody is, you know, when, you, when somebody is typing that keyword and your bid is one euro, um, maybe that person is more likely to make a purchase if you if they you know are in a certain audience um, like let's say here shoppers uh, maybe these are the people which are likely to buy from you you will you will know that from the cost per conversion if that is really low then maybe they are you know exactly like like um, you know you're, you're, you want to be uh, you can you can bid more aggressively on these people and instead of you know bidding one euro you can bid two euros or maybe even five euros it's up to you uh, if somebody is not really buying your shoes at all uh, but that's still you know a relevant keyword you can uh, see check that audience and you can set that audience uh, to let's say minus 50 percent bidding and it means that when the person will belong to that audience even if they type in you know, uh, new shoes online, you will be bidding maximum 50 cents for their click. Just their click because they are in the wrong audience. So you can do really amazing things with audiences and audience bid adjustments, especially with the automated ones. So how do I find these audiences? First of all, let's go into the campaign and the ad group that you want simply to add some, you know, audiences to. Now we need to find an audience which we want to add. So let's say I want to add something about uh, maybe, maybe, maybe marketing. Let's just type marketing and let's see that I added some audiences related to marketing, but some of them are new and unchecked. So let me check all the audiences, you know, regarding marketing. Everything is checked now. Everything is everything is awesome. Very good. Um, so this is how you add these audiences. We can add additional audiences like um, maybe magazines. And uh, we see that there are many audiences which are unchecked. So let's just add all of them. This is an observation audience, so it doesn't really matter. You will not ruin anything by adding many, many audiences. It's not targeting, it's observation. So these are the parameters that Google will check if your, if the user fits that matches, like you know, gets into that audience or not. Uh, what kind of audiences are there? Um, some of them are, you know, they are detailed demographics, like for example, parental status, like, you know, if they are parents or not, marital status, single in relationship, in relationship may, maybe married or not, education, um, they are highest level of education attained, let's add all of that, 
um, homeowner status, right? So homeowners, maybe renters, uh, many interesting, interesting demographic elements there are. Um, maybe let us check. Um, yeah, that one, that one we checked, that one as well. Great. Okay, so we checked everything here. Let us move on to affinity. Um, what exactly is affinity? So affinity is roughly the category of the pages that people usually browse. You know, you sort of, you know, are interested in, uh, you, you browse a lot of news portals. So, you know, you might be a news junkie. So that's sort of your affinity category. You know, you come a lot to the sports sites. So, you know, you maybe are interested in sports. It doesn't mean that you will buy anything related to sports. It's just your affinity category, which is based or presumed upon what kind of, you know, content you con consume. So I maybe um, consume a lot of content related uh, to new technology devices. So sort of I would belong to the uh, probably new technology um, affinity category. Um, then in market segments, what kind of things people are currently in buying or considering purchasing? Maybe you're considering purchasing a car or a vehicle, uh, maybe clothes, maybe consumer electronics, maybe, maybe, maybe any other things. As this is, this is observation, it doesn't mean that you should just tick that one audience which you think that your customer is in because it's observation it doesn't mean that i cannot stress that enough how important is to know as much as possible about you know your customers and not to presume in advance that only people that you know are dog lovers will buy dog food because maybe uh, dog food can be purchased, you know, when uh, you have, uh, I don't know, your parents' dog, um, you know, at your home, or maybe you're visiting or going somewhere and, uh, you know, you want to buy, you know, a treat to somebody that you will be visiting. So th th there can be many, or, or maybe, you know, maybe you are a dog lover. But at the same time, you know, you have toothache and maybe at the same time, you're also considering buying a car or maybe, you know, you want to find a cleaning lady, which will, you know, clean your house. So you have many problems in your life. And just saying that, you know, you belong to this one audience is a little bit narrow minded. So this at least this is our take. And uh, from what I see is that you can have you can have uh, really detailed insights on customers uh, by adding as many as possible observation audiences. So once all these audiences are added, let's click save. And now let's start automation. So how can we start implementing automation with audiences? really easy one is let us select all the audiences and click edit right at this point you will see change with adjustment max cpc bits um, or create an automated rule this is what we are interested in i don't want to come every morning and check which audience is performing better, which is performing worse before, because this is a routine activity. I want to know what is good for me. And when I know what is good for me, I want these audiences, you know, to perform, to be adjust, bits to be adjusted based on the efficiency. So how do we know what's good, what's bad? I know what that's okay. So we have, some costs, conversions, and cost per conver and, and, and cost per conversion. So on average, in our account, conversion costs about 15 cents. What does it mean? 
it means that if there's an audience where conversion costs less than 10 cents or le even less than 5 cents, then this is a very good audience. And if there's a con an audience which where conversion costs more than 20 cents, then that's a bad audience. Simple, simple as that, right? Let us check. Let's do a breakdown. Uh, not breakdown, but uh, let's check, do the drop down menu and see that we have some actual audiences uh, where cost per conversion is 0 0.65. Um, and we also have some audiences where cost per conversion is even zero. Of course, uh, here we have zero impressions, so that doesn't count. But if we check, you know, from clicks, we will see that there are some audiences uh, with five cents per click, six cents per click, two cents per click, and etc. So really, really uh, great low costing audiences. And let us bid more and bid more aggressively on these audiences because our average cost per conversion is 15 cents. And um, let us bid lower here because it's way above what I would be willing to bid on. And I see that, look, this is business, business and industrial products, home and garden, book lovers, um maybe no wonder that these audiences uh, you know perform worse uh, than others but i don't know in advance which audiences will perform better or worse for particular clients i just know after the fact when it happened that you know this audience one performs better or audience two performs worse so how do we do the automation select all these audiences again click edit, create an automation rule. So now we'll create two basic automation rules. Um, rule number one uh, will be to bid, uh, to increase bid adjustment by 50% if the cost per conversion in last 30 days was lower than seven cents. That's it. So name increase um, by 50% if our, 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 if um, CPA was lower than 0 0.07, right? So let's, let's make it like that. Just copy that to, to have notes. Owner, everything is good, action. Um, so what do I want to do? Do I want to pause audience? Do I want to enable audience? Change max CPC bids, max CPM bids, bid adjustments, or I want to send email. So I can simply pause that audience. If some audience is really horrible, I can just pause it. Uh, but in this case, of course, I don't. I don't want to pause it because um, because you know this audience with the CPA was um, with lower than zero point seven percent is amazing. So I don't. Have, I want to pause it. I can enable audiences. So let's say when I pause the audiences, maybe in about two months, I want to re-enable them because maybe uh, things changed and the audience might start working and might start performing well. I don't know. That's, we, that can be implemented as well. Um, I can change max CPC bids. Uh, this is not really done with the audit through the audience section because I can change that on keywords um, level or, or, or somewhere like that. But uh, even if I change that for the audiences, it will not really do any impact. The same with SIMPM bids. Uh, I can change the bid adjustment or I can send myself an email saying, look, Aurimas, um, this audience is performing amazing. Uh, check it out. I don't want to do that. I, I, I don't want to, you know, spam myself. I just want, you know, this activity to be done. I want to change bid adjustment. I want to increase, um, this 
you know, audience by 50% if the CPA is lower than seven cents. So how to which audiences I wanna address. I only want to address the audiences in selecting campaigns. So let me check the APG media account. Well, sorry, not, not account campaign, the one which I you know, just, just, just uh, did. And uh, let's click done, that's it. I only wanna apply it to the audiences in this campaign. I can also apply it to all audiences throughout my whole account, but maybe in some campaigns, the cost per, you know, cost per action is higher, can be higher, maybe in some is, can be lower. So just plainly, you know, pausing or increasing or decreasing uh, audience costs uh, in these campaigns might be not too smart. So I would sometimes, you know, leave uh, this application uh, to campaign level, not the whole account level. So what are the conditions? So as I said, in this case, if in last um, two weeks or last month, CPA was lower than 70 cents, seven cents, uh, the, 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 uh, we will increase this 50, it, uh, increase the bid adjustment by 50%. So like this action. Um, so the condition has to be CPA was lower than seven cents. So uh, conversion, um, so, cost per conversion was uh, lower or equal to 0 0.07 and uh, lower or equal to 0 cost, cost, cost conversion was lower than equal to not 0 0.07 and let us apply it how often do i want to check it i want to run it let's say weekly on let's let's do it on sunday it doesn't it doesn't really matter uh, this campaign is not really so sometimes i would you know run this uh these these automations every single day but in this case this is not a really high priority campaign and i'm just showing you you know i'm just building it to to show you how this works so i want to have the the frequency weekly sunday 2015 um and using data from definitely not all time but last 30 days that is that is it so Let's check the last 30 days and uh, if cost per conversion was lower than 0 0.07, uh, then let me preview it and see how if there would be any changes to anything that I've done so far. It's testing, testing, and there's going to be a message um, telling me how these automations uh, would happen. So we see here that this audience, uh, uh, approximately 131 audiences would change if you ran rule now. Awesome. So this audience bid adjustment would be set to plus 50%. So some audiences we see that they were already plus 30%, but some audiences were new. So if that's a new audience, it will be set to plus 50%. And um, that's that's really good so that, so let's just do that and uh, we can check these audiences um, to see where they are right here under the tools and uh, and rules section bulk action rules and we see that there's already there has to be one um, audience which sorry one one rule which is called this one increase by 50 percent if cpa is more or less than uh, than than uh, 0.07 and re keep, re keep repeating it it constantly so um second rule that i want to create 
is the one which will um, and we see we see what that that we had um, we can have rules about genders about parental status rules um, income rules keyword rules uh, plenty of them so we can you know we can uh, pause gender if that one doesn't is not efficient increase it if it's if it's you know too efficient do whatever we want so let's let's uh, do the one that we talked before let's use the audience rule rule and uh, and uh, use that to increase the bid adjustments if the audience really is performing really well so our previous rule was that we want to increase it so let's now let's decrease it decrease by 50 percent if cpa now is more than more than 20 cents so owner that one action um change bid adjustment i want to decrease bid adjustment by 50 percent uh selected not accounts but i want to check the campaigns that campaign again and the conditions are very simple so let us see sorry not audience name but the uh, the conversion cost per conversion has to be higher than 0 0.2 that is it apply let's keep it to weekly uh, Sundays using data from last 30 days again and um, let us preview the rule I will see that there's going to be one audience uh, where they are, the, the bid adjustments would be changed. So, you know, that's really good because we see that there's only really one. Uh, or maybe let us change it a little bit. Uh, so instead of this 0 0.2, let's change it to 0 0.15 so, so that we have more impact because it's not really very likely that we will have uh, those 0 0.2 euros per conversion. So let us test it again. Preview it. And we will see that there will be more. Still one audience. Whatever. So you see that there's, um, there's, the, uh, there's one audience which would be changed. Um, bit adjustment would be changed if we ran that rule here. We just created two rules uh, to automate uh, bid adjustments, and um, let's uh, let's check if actually I, th I think we didn't really run them. Uh, let us go to audiences. Yeah, okay. So it didn't it didn't really run. Uh, let's go back to rules let us um we can either wait till sunday or i can just check that one and edit um and uh let's uh let's 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 edit it um here and then Uh, somehow it I cannot find where to force run it um, anyway on Sunday weekly on Sunday 2015 it will run uh, what can what other rules are there so there are rules uh, for campaigns so let's say I can either pause a campaign um, enable a campaign uh, I can I can uh, delete the campaign if um, I, I some some results you know were un, unfitting. Uh, the same things apply to ad groups, keywords. Um, why would you care about keyword rules? Here I think some it's really interesting thing about keyword rules 
is that condition, let's say con con here it says the condition status all but removed. Um, so the really important thing with keywords is quality score. So if keyword quality score, uh, keyword quality score can be up to 10, from one to 10. So if it's really, really low, like for example, lower than free, I think that you would probably be willing to, um, let's say, simply pause these keywords because low quality score and uh, uh, okay action uh, let's let us post keyword all keyword let's yeah let's uh, let's choose the same keyword in APG media uh, campaign and let us check if we have any keywords with low quality score no we don't really good and uh, now we also have this uh, rule which currently just ran only once uh, but we can change that you know if we want uh, to to run and uh, update uh, low quality like pause low quality score keywords because you don't really want an account um, keywords with uh, quality score three two and one why because key keyword port score addresses how Google will see um, it will address how you will perform in your ad rank and uh, with low quality keyword quality score you will also have low ad rank and uh, you will pay more for a click and you will usually end up lower um, than, uh, than than you know google search than you would want so this would be like you know with the quality score updates the same thing can be applied to topic rules like you know, adding a topping, removing a topping, pausing it, um, placement rules, really great rule as well. For example, I can have a placement rule, um, let's say name and um, my, my name rule. Okay, so that's, I wanna, I wanna pause, pause apps. and um, placements in uh, selecting campaigns okay so i have one uh, placement campaign with uh, with uh, in in display campaign called mb vans so let's let's not pause apps but pause low performing performing uh, ones or let's yeah let's continue keep, keep the apps for that. So a uh, condition can be something like that. I can have, uh, uh, I can have really interesting conditions. I can have, uh, let's say conversions. If the cost per conversion is, let's say higher than, let's say hundred euros. So let us continue not, let's change that one to pause high CPA so cost per conversion more than 100 euros um, let's check it daily and um, let's check data from last let's say seven days and um, action uh, post placement if that from that placement cost per conversion was higher than 100 euros. Let us preview. Uh, it will tell us that there's no placement with that kind of you know particular set of rules. Very good. Anyhow, there are really, really interesting, interesting and useful rules here with Google. So we still have a couple of uh, minutes left. I will show you 
um, some Facebook ad rules. Let me let me pause now. I will switch to Facebook and I will show you some automation ideas um, for for Facebook. So let's go back uh, to to automation and uh, now let us focus on uh, Facebook ad automation. Um, at this point, uh, there's uh, one thing which is uh, relevant to discuss. Uh, it's but plainly it's very very similar to to Google ad automation. So how does it work? You dig into either campaigns, ad sets, ads, or something that something else that you wanna create, and uh, you go to rules. At the rules section, uh, you can either manage rules or you can create a new rule. So here, let us create a, create a new rule. I want um, to have a rule name which will, which will pause the ad, pause low performing ad. And um, so I wanna apply to all active ads. Um, of course, and um, I want to turn it off if uh, the condition is poor. So let's say in my case, I'm just making it up. Um, cost per result. Let's let's say that if uh, this is our company page, so it doesn't really have any transactions or revenue, but let me presume that you know cost per result is greater than you know, um, let's let's say 0 0.3 euros so if because usually um, our our cost per results are way lower but if let us say cost per result is greater than 0 0.3 euros and uh, um i want to yeah let's let's let me have um, additional conditions. So let's say lifetime impressions is greater than a thousand. Um, what is also important is not just add that cost per result 0 0.3 euros without any other additional conditions, because uh, it might be that you know in one day you will have uh, you know the, those uh, uh, several seven impressions. Uh, cost per result will be um, you know one euro, but maybe um, in two days there will be another you know. 200 impressions or 2000 impressions and your cost per result will drop you know significantly so you know you never know with in the very very beginning so i would say that lifetime impressions should be greater than at least 1000 um, because if it's 100 impressions uh, you cannot really you know you can do some predictions but with thousand that's that's better so thousand um at least thousand impressions um all good and um, so exactly the same thing is what, what, what is Facebook is saying um, adding a condition to ensure that lifetime impressions is um, is, is, is um, greater than a thousand will help improve results um, let me keep keep that with um, just over a thousand and cost per result um, over um, one well, or over 30 cents um, time range let's let me go to once again last 30 days and um, and um, let's leave the account window to, to default um, I want to schedule it you know continuously continuously uh, you know to run it uh, as often as possible uh, at this particular case, this particular rule uh, doesn't really make sense, you know, to run it continuously. Uh, but when we create rules, you know, for Facebook, uh, continuous is really uh, one of the let's say better um, automation conditions because you want uh, these rules to uh, reappear and, and appear. Um, always on. So let's say some in some cases maybe some so, so some audience is performing worse, maybe some asset or some ad is performing worse, uh, or maybe you wanna you know apply 
or maybe you want to re-enable it i can know in a couple of days so you know just keep it you know continuous and maybe if in last previous then i don't know man two weeks there have been zero cost on that audience maybe it's worth re-enabling it uh, to just check it if it would work again so continuous in that case works currently let's keep it to daily and um, notifications i don't want to get any notifications um, I, if i can and let us create that rule that's it we have created our our rule and um, it is done now we can create additional rule like you know the one for example to turn them on so let's turn on the ads and uh, for example rule name can be cpa is lower than 0 0.2 or sorry 0 02 and uh, that applies to all pause stats i want to re-enable them if the cost per result is lower small smaller than 0 0.02 uh, euros and uh, let's keep it to a lifetime and of course once again let's keep it let's either do it continuous or let's do in this particular case um, a daily one uh, this lifetime impressions also is not really doesn't really make sense eight thousand let's keep it to at least thousand and apply um i don't want to get any emails let us create that rule again so i just showed you uh three things one of them is about uh, about facebook chatbot how it works second thing how to create it uh then Google Ads and uh, Google Ads automation, how Google Ads automation basically works and how to create it. Third thing, Facebook ad automation and how to create it. Very simple, you know, three things. Fourth one is the one with the zaps. So one, one more break. Let me, you know, switch back to, to my to my uh, browser with the uh, Zapier account and I'll be back in a second. So we're back uh, with our last uh, last section, the one about uh, Zaps and the one about probably yet another awesome, awesome um, section with automation. What kind of Zaps can you create? What kind of automation elements can you create? To be honest, anything you want um you can choose the, so how do zaps work or any other automation elements there's a trigger then there's an action and uh roughly that's it so trigger and an action so the thing the same thing was happening uh, with the uh, google ads and facebook ads right so the trigger was if you know the cost per conversion is higher Pause it. If it's lower, enable it. Um, the same was with Facebook. And here, I want to do something more interesting. So what can we do? Uh, let, uh, let me show you one really interesting thing. Uh, our website is running WordPress. Uh, so let me show you how we can make automated, uh, basically, how can make automated sharing of our uh, blog posts on our website right away no sorry not our website on our facebook page or any facebook page uh, that you want right away in in couple of couple of seconds there are many many apps which you can use um in which are integrated with uh, zapier uh, facebook mission messenger pages um, Google contacts, um, Google ads, uh, lead form extensions, um, for plenty of built-in apps, many, many interesting things. So let me choose WordPress and um, you can just, you know, we can also, uh, I think, just type in any random words like marketing and you will see that everything that is related to marketing um, or 
or, or automation elements will be um, there in, and, and, and available. So I want, I want WordPress. Let me, let me go back to, let me choose WordPress. And I want, so my trigger is gonna be, is gonna trigger when a new post is created, right? So whenever a new post is created, I want it published on my Facebook page. So select that whenever the new post is on WordPress page selected. Once again, now I need to sign into WordPress and this sign in uh, isn't really that complicated. Um, what I need to do, I just need to, it says based on full publicly accessible uh, WordPress URL pasted. Uh, do not include VP admin um, and uh, don't do that. So I will pause again here, just not, not, not to you know, waste your time, you know, me copying and pasting the usernames and passwords. And when I'm done, I will re-enable it right away. So um, what I just did, I signed into my WordPress site by by roughly um, cop adding like you know my link to my WordPress site, uh, adding uh, the uh, username and password. And um, now it says that the account is already connected. So now I can, now I can continue. Uh, one, one quick note, uh, before connecting, before um, using it, you know, because before connecting uh, this account to your website, all you need to do is install, so install a Zapier plugin on your WordPress site. So this is just needed. So let's continue. Um, now what I want to do, I want to choose the posts which already are published and um, post type. Um, yeah, of course it's, it's posts. It has to be published and uh, let us continue. So this will only, only post uh, those those posts which are which are published so if a post is published it will be it will be uh, uh, also you know posted on my facebook page so it says that look uh, there's there's uh, there are some posts like you know for example post c uh, which was uh, sort of you know created in uh, right, right right now right away um, it's called uh, Google uh, Facebook um, uh, something. Uh, let us let us uh, continue. And what I want do what do you do? I want to do with that post. It's I wanna I want to post it to my Facebook page. So then I connect. I say that I wanna you know connect my post it to my Facebook page. I want to create a page post and once again continue. So now I need to connect my account. Uh, this one is the account which I already connected to, to Zapier. I need to choose um, a page. So I want to choose my personal Facebook page and uh, not to spam my, spam my company in that particular case. Um, so what kind of message do I want to push? I want to say, uh, hi, um, this is all new, uh, post from our team. And then I want to insert uh, some data, such as, for example, title. And um, I also want to add the link. Um, let, before that, let me click enter and say enjoy reading. Enjoy reading. Um, 
and let me add some emojis of course something something fun all good then also need the link url uh, just make sure that it's clickable and it directs uh, back to the uh, to the article and let me click continue so now it says that it's gonna send test page uh, you know with that uh, that element let me test and uh, review let me go to facebook Okay, um, our mass polis cheese. Where exactly are the pages? This one. Hi, this is all new post from APG Media. Google, Facebook, Atask to Baker to the Menu Valdemars. Enjoy reading. Awesome. Posted just now. It works. I'm happy about that. This is a very magical thing because now all I need to do is simply turn on Zap and let it be. That's it. That's basically the way Zapier works, and that's basically the way it's 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 it's, it's working. So there are there are many Zaps. Really, really uh, try it out uh, yourself. Um, test some, uh, play with it, and um, and maybe maybe you will find you know your favorite ones. So at this point, that's it for today's lecture. I will see you in about um, I think half an hour. So let us meet at ten thirty, I think. So not not ten thirty. Let's let us meet at ten twenty, uh, because I have a meeting before then. So. This is one of the reasons why I'm pre-recording this lecture today. Um, see you soon and talk to you right away. Bye-bye.